Hello, hi. Hey everyone, welcome. We will just get started in a minute or so. Uh, in the meantime, can everyone please put your names on the link I just shared on the chat under the attendees. And if I can get volunteers for note takers, I would really appreciate it. I can definitely help with note taking next time. I have to jump off in like 25 minutes. I can't stay for the full thing, unfortunately. Okay, no worries. So generally we will put I'll give my example and the affiliation, like the company you work for or the other groups that you are you have joined or are part of in the brackets in front of your name. And thank you, Savita, for taking notes. Cool. Okay, so we have about seven folks who have joined, which is good. I see few folks who have already volunteered for issues who have also joined. And the good thing is this meeting is recorded. So for folks who cannot make it, we'll be able to catch up later. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, is the font okay? Can everyone read my browser screen share? All right. Looks good to me. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, so some of you might have been around in the first meeting we did in November. Uh, the, it was basically a very uh, kick, initial kickstart meeting where we were talking about why we are doing this and what we plan to do, what was some history behind version one, etc. Does anyone have any questions about that? I can give a quick uh, repeat of that if people are curious. Okay, sounds like, okay, so sounds like people probably know more or less. And if you have more questions or just curious, uh, let me know on the channel. I am happy to repeat what I said in the first meeting. There is also a recording in the meeting minutes for the first meeting right here. So you'll be able to catch up there as well if you want. Now, in terms of the division of work that we have done, so, so far we have come up with these deliverables and people have volunteered themselves under each of these issues to take care of those tasks. So thank you so much for all of you who have done that. I really appreciate it. And I'm really looking forward to getting this into version two uh, as we make more and more progress. So, this also doesn't mean that any new members, any new participants who haven't volunteered don't cannot do any work. So for them, I would say uh, there are two options and I'm happy to hear from others if they have others as well. So first option is you can tag team with someone who is already assigned to this or one of these issues 
and say, hey, I would like to help on this as well. And then both of you can work together and on that particular deliverable. We'll go through each of the deliverables uh, in the meeting today and kind of get a good summary of what to expect. And the second piece you could do if you are new and want to contribute is go through the version one white paper if you haven't already. And if you have, is there something that you thought was missing and was worth adding? So if you feel something like that uh, or know something like that today in the meeting, feel free to let me know uh, and everyone know now. Uh, but if you need time, that's fine as well. Uh, you can take a look at version one and then once you are ready, add a comment on this issue 747 saying, I think we could add this or we could update this section, etc. And then we'll create a similar issue like these for you. And then you can take over ownership for that. Does that sound okay for everyone? Any questions? Okay, I'll take silence as a affirmation that I explained everything right. Cool. Uh, so now uh, I think Kevin, Santini, Savita, uh, and uh, who else in the owners is there? Uh, Ma Matthias, are you there as well? I maybe I missed you. No, okay. Yes, Sorry. I'm here. Yes, oh, yes. you're here. Okay, cool. So since we, since some of you are here, I think we could take uh, those issues as examples of how to kind of go and deliver each of the issues. And then for others, uh, we can also cover if time permits. But before that, I wanted to get some thoughts in terms of logistics. So last time when we discussed, there was an idea that, hey, we have the white paper version one in Markdown. Uh, and if we continue to update it in Markdown, it would be easier to make progress versus something like uh, Google Docs. So for that, the one of the suggestions was we could use HackMD. And then I went ahead and tried uh, to copy paste the entire Markdown in HackMD. And guess what? We ended up uh, exceeding the highest limit of number of characters that you can use in HackMD for a free tier uh, subscription, which is what I have at least. So as a result of that, we I don't think HackMD would really work. I tried to remove any metadata and other stuff, but it still pretty much was over the limit. So now we have, in my opinion, two options, and I wanted to get everyone's thoughts on that. One is we can convert the Markdown version one into a Google Doc. Uh, it's it should be easy to do with uh, something like a Pandoc utility, and I can do that and share that Google Doc with everyone, and then oh. we can make updates there. Or the okay. other option is Markdown. Yes, Matthias. I just want to add a note that um, I've you I've worked in another org that's a nonprofit that use HackMD, and they do have a nonprofit sponsorship program that essentially allows us to use the the team tier uh, for free. I think. I just found the, let me add it into the document. I found the, the link for applying. So, um, there you go. Um, we can format that later. But essentially, yeah, we can apply for it. There are certain things we need to do, like they are allowed to use the organization's logo um, for reporting purposes. So we probably have to get permission from CNCF, right, et cetera. But it is an option if we want to explore. Right, right. Okay, I did not know about that. So thank you for sharing that link. I, yeah, like you said, I think the permissions that we might need, I am wondering how much time they'll take and shouldn't become sort of a blocker for us until we have that. But uh, I think it's worth, uh, at least I'll open a ticket and see what CNCF says about it. So, so that's one option, which is good which we which did not know. Second one was Google Docs, which I was just sharing where we convert everything to Google Docs uh, and then update everything there. Once we feel it's ready, we convert it back to Markdown and then submit a new version to Markdown. 
the third option i'm thinking is actually doing all of it in github uh, where we in, create a pull request for each of these issues uh, and we just follow the usual github review process uh, make suggestions make updates discuss it over the pull request or the issue and then sort of update it only thing that we'll do different is instead of updating the existing version one of the white paper we'll create a copy called version two and make all our prs on top of that i think i know mateus you have a uh, fork of for your issue uh, that's pointing to version one so that's fine we can yeah. update it later if we decide to do that yeah. so the these are three options uh, any thoughts on which way we could go any uh, especially i'm looking for like strong opinions like this would be terrible idea this would be a very good idea and if people are ambivalent or like thinking like either way is fine then i'll just go and toss a coin and pick one of them for now Ushkar, i think the google docs will be a better option okay i see some messages in chat as well plus one for google docs from ron okay do, do people think it will just be easier to kind of make quick iterative changes in google docs versus github where it might be slow and the whole review process might drag us down or uh, it will be another reason go ahead it uh, it will be easier to make iterative changes as well as it will be easier for people to make comments and leave their <laughs> and leave their suggestions on the doc right right do anyone the, go ahead i think the google docs is a good idea because thanks to it we can easily see the whole changes in in one one place yeah. Because yeah. if we use the pull request, we have several pull requests, but we don't see the 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 big picture of the, of the document. Yeah, yeah, yeah. agree. agree. And Google Docs will also make the process easier for the community review. Correct. Correct. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, do anyone have any restrictions with through their company or the location they are in? where they are not allowed to use google docs because that could be a problem if you want to contribute and can't use google docs i have but i will use the private computer not from the my company because the google docs is the, is blocked right right because i yeah. work in the bank so yes i i have gone through this yep yeah, i have gone through similar experience in my past job so totally empathize with you on that i i actually started working on version 1 when my work laptop did not have google docs access uh, and i just like you matthias i booked on private my own personal laptop for that yeah okay i think savita had a question do we need to maintain google docs after the version is published so this is what i'm thinking and i'm going to ask some feedback from uh, our co-chairs as well uh in case of version 1 what we did was we as contributors had all of us had edit access to it and we made all our changes after that uh we opened it up for feedback to the rest of the tag uh, as well as all the other tags in cncf uh, sort of like rfc uh, after that period was over we ended up locking that google doc and converted everything to markdown and any minor changes that people had to submit post publication all of that was done in uh, the markdown instead of google doc so just for our own sake and to get quick comments for folks unfamiliar with markdown or github workflows we just use google doc until then and once it was ready for publication we just converted to markdown and continued all the changes there so we'll probably do something very similar in version 2 as well okay cool any any questions uh 
I know I'm seeing a couple of folks for the first time, so want to keep some time for intros as well. We can do it now or as a kind of a break from technical topics, or we can do it at the end. Up to you, up to you all. Since I can't stay for the whole thing, I'd love to get to know folks now. Uh, that's okay. We could go for it. Yes, let's. You you start, and then all of us can do quick intros, and then. We'll pick one of the issues and then end the meeting after that. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, hey folks, uh, I'm Kevin. Uh, I work at Cockroach Labs as a PM and was engineer previously at, like Kong, at IBM and did DevRel stuff uh, at Kong. Now, I've always been very interested in security and how it you know, impacts users for our products. So um, I saw this ticket uh, issue open and I thought, you know, I'd volunteer. Welcome, Kevin. I know you've been around in Sincere for a bit, then went away, and then you're back. So happy to have you back again. All right, maybe I'll go. Uh, hi, I'm Pushkar. I work at VMware and also active in Kubernetes uh, Six Security. I've been part of CNCF Tag Security for two, three years now, almost. Uh, worked in version one as one of the co-authors and then really liked the whole process, then did some more work on that. And then now trying to lead this project uh, with all of you all's help. Hi, I'm Shantini. So I, I'm currently a student and I have been here, like I'm contributing to CNCF tag security and I am also a contributor to Kubernetes 6 and uh, this is uh, like first time I'm working on the paper and I'm glad to be here. Welcome. It's great. You're starting early, uh, contributing to open source. I wish I did that when I was a student. Okay, who wants to go next? I can go next. I'll go next. Go ahead, John. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, my name is John Ziola. I am a security consultant. Uh, I own a small 15, 16 person consulting company. Um, and uh, I've been involved with the CNCF for about a year, more of like a toe in the water. I am leading the security controls project, um, which uses this white paper and the supply chain white paper as inputs. Uh, and we're looking to expand that project, uh, track V2s of any of these papers, but also potentially collaborate with other uh, cloud native and cloud focused orgs uh, to get something useful out there. Um, and I'm also working on the serverless security white paper uh, on the CNCF. And before the CNCF, I was more of a member of the Apache Software Foundation and did a little bit of work with OSSF. Um, and I'm looking throughout this year to increase my involvement with all of those communities. Well, welcome. Uh, it's great to have someone who has worked in so many different foundations and already working with so many different projects in uh, CNCF tag. I think your perspective on how this version two should shape and sort of complement the other con security controls and serverless white paper, I, I would really appreciate that. Yeah, looking forward to it. Hey everybody. So uh, my name is Juan Vaila. Uh, I'm the CDO and co-founder of a startup called Oxide. Uh, we're building an application security testing platform for cloud native applications. Uh, I've joined the uh, uh, tag security in October last year, 2021. Uh, in addition, I also lead in a cloud native project in OASP. I'm, uh, I'm happy to be here. Hey, welcome, Ron. Uh happy to have you here and if uh, this is some of the, the we also have us our own general purpose cncf meeting just right after this call at in about 40 minutes from now so definitely hope to see you there as well yeah sure thanks also i noticed some of you have mentioned or given intros on the chat so if you are shy, want to do that, or don't have good audio or video environment around you, that's a good option as well, like Savita has done. Hi, I guess I can go. 
Um, I'm Marina. I'm a PhD student at NYU. I work on TUF. I've also been doing some work recently on notary and the um, supply chain security white paper through for CNCF. So just here seeing how, how I can help. So. Welcome, Marina. Uh, I really love the work on supply chain security white paper all of you have done and uh, looking forward to how we can kind of complement again the, this white paper version with the supply chain paper because version one was really released before supply chain paper exists. So looking forward to your feedback. Hello, uh, my name is Alok. I work at a startup uh, known as the Nonstack and I have been involved with the CNCF community since the last two years. So I have contributed uh, towards the cloud native security white paper, towards the supply chain security white paper, and currently I am contributing on the serverless security white paper. And I were, and I am planning to get more involved into the cloud native security white paper version too. Welcome, Alok. Looks like you have the record for most number of white papers worked on. So great to have you here. And I think you're, again, having worked on all the white papers, tell us if we go the wrong way or tell us if we repeat any kind of con, uh, topic or sections that you've seen already covered in other papers. I think the main, one of the main goals of the papers is also being very brief and concise wherever we can so that it doesn't end up becoming like a novel versus uh, a paper yeah, sure okay cool anyone else remaining and i think i'm the, the last the okay last go one. ahead yeah hi hi everybody my name is Mateus. matthews it can be um i work for banks and for banking in banking industry so the security is very important for us and uh, and implementing the interoperability portability portability architecture uh, of uh, cloud native is very important because we 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 plan to go to the multi cloud strategy so um, everything uh, everything from the cncf is very important for us every tools um, yeah i would like to contribute uh, contribute in this this white paper uh, version two. So thank you very much and happy to hear. Thank you, uh, Matthews. Is that the right way to pronounce? Yes, it's okay. Okay, all right. I'll try my best, but please yeah, pardon me. Good. Okay, so uh, thank you, Matthews. He, uh, for everyone else, uh, Matthews has been one of the people, contributors who is already ahead in terms of the contributions. I see a fork uh, for the contributions he wanted to make already. He also shared with me something on Google Docs, uh, which, which is a specific thing. And this issue that you see his name in front of is actually uh, something that he recommended. And we just created an issue and there you go. Now it's gonna be part of version two. So thank you so much, really appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to working more with you. Thanks. Okay, cool. All right, so we have, we got everyone else. Uh, please tell us if we missed you, but if not, uh, let's assume based on our discussion so far, unless people have other opinions or uh, too many people who are gonna contribute say, no, Google Docs is very bad. So far we have looks like general consensus that either Google Docs is better or Google Docs is as good as the other options. So we'll go with that. I'll that's on me. I'll create one uh, in a in in a couple of days or at least end of this week. Um, after that, uh, what will it look like in terms of contributions? So for that, maybe we can pick one of the issues. Anyone wants to tag team with me and go through their issue? Uh, we can start on that. So otherwise I'll just pick something randomly. 
no, okay. So let's see, uh, maybe we can go with Dev Advocado. I think that's Kevin, if I'm not yep. wrong, right? Yep. Yep, okay, all right, cool. Someday tell me the story behind your GitHub handle. Sounds really interesting. All right, okay, cool. So this is the description. Uh, we did a retrospective on the paper, found some really great ideas on how to improve. Version two should reflect those improvements. Uh, clear signal to readers that we listen to their feedback and improve our deliverables by letting them shape what we deliver. So what is in scope looks like permanent survey or page link uh, could be a GitHub issue where readers can leave their feedback. Add a section talking about retrospective survey, micro survey and its results add relevant content like as a link or built-in section in the paper. Okay, so uh, anyone remember uh, doing uh, or me talking about retrospective last year about white paper who are in the call? Totally okay if you don't. Okay, so I'll give some quick background and then we can dive deeper. Basically after the version one was published, the idea was that, okay, we need to know if we really did a good job or not. Like we can just publish it and we think we did a good job, but there is no way to know. So what's the best way to get feedback from others who have read it, get feedback from community members. And that's why we created this sort of a retrospective, which really gave some good feedback. And without going into too much detail, basically we did a, survey uh, which we shared through CNCF and other channels uh, and other social media to get feedback from folks who had re uh, read the white paper version one. We got feedback which was objective in terms of data uh, as well as some subjective feedback. Uh, we put some or all of this feedback here and then uh, one of the community members helped me write up a summary of the feedback as well as a carve out the anecdotal feedback we received. So these are all the results uh, of what people thought. And it gave some really interesting ideas about what version two should look like. Uh, for example, if you see here, one of the biggest uh, clear indicators was people are struggling to figure out what is secure defaults and they asked with a great majority about 86 percent or so saying we want you to tell us what is secure defaults and how do we do it in cloud native way so as part of that we ended up working on this which is guideline for applying secure defaults which is something that was created uh, late last year and now it actually exists in a Google Doc right here. So this is a very high level description of how secure defaults can be implemented in a cloud native way. And similar to if you have seen Python enhancement proposals, uh, we have uh, a similar structure and uh, statements in terms of how you can do it. So there are eight ways to do it. And it's about a couple of pages long. So this is what the retrospective did and we really enjoyed it. And I think the feedback generally was, this is great. People haven't done this a lot in other white papers and we should do more of this. So, the, so now what coming back to this issue, the goal for this issue or the work expected here is we need to have the survey link or some link where folks can give feedback directly to us as part of the white paper, because sometimes people don't have access to GitHub uh, or sometimes folks don't have access to Google Docs. Uh, so if there is a simple way like a survey monkey link or something else, it is easier to get feedback from them if they find the link at the end of the paper or at the beginning of the paper. So we need to find that place and put that survey link somewhere where it is accessible 
and that survey can be ongoing forever where we can keep getting feedback from people uh, okay oh looks like kevin uh, dropped off but that's fine we'll try to cover this and so that's first part the second one is uh, all of the stuff that i just described we need to find a place in the paper to explain and share all of this so my my hope is we create a section in white paper where we explain hey this is our retrospective cycle this is what we did did these are the survey results we may not put all the images in the paper but we add links to it and links to the raw results as well and then finally uh, this applying secure defaults could actually go as part of the paper or could go as a separate link and once these three things are added in the paper basically this issue will be over so that's how we'll sort of tackle all of these issues where if we finish all of these three tasks then we can say the issue is closed so it's it's very simple uh, any any questions so far we have time for one more so we'll pick another issue after this as well does that make sense did i go too fast did i miss any adding any context please let me know okay all right uh, alok you wanted to say something i saw you on mute but okay if you don't Uh, I was just saying that you covered almost everything. Okay, cool. All right. So let's pick another one. Oh, for folks who are around, uh, Santini, maybe we can pick this issue if you're okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Okay, cool. So let's go through this. So this is another uh, artifact that was created after version one was published, uh, which is threat metrics for containers. uh we did not have as a result obviously any reference or explanation about threat metrics in version 1 so but because this has now become so one of the go to documents to understand what threats are relevant for containers it made sense to include or at least reference it in version 2 so the first task for for santini we would be to read this medium blog which kind of goes through the threat metrics uh uh for containers uh, there is there was also a good uh, uh demo video uh if i remember correctly from jen burns uh and they explained all of the details about this some history as well so I, i'll try to find that link for you santini if, if if possible but this gives you a good idea about what to expect in terms of what this is about why this is important and uh, what might be useful we could end up uh discussing more on google docs as well if you have more questions on this and then once you get a good enough understanding of this what we'll try to find is okay this is uh, i have my version 1 paper which would be the current google doc that we'll create what is something that is already covered in both the threat metrics and version 1 and what is something that's missing so something that is already covered we'll say uh, we'll basically cite the threat metrics there and say that as per this particular threat it makes sense uh, to do this instead of just saying it makes sense to do this in the paper and then in terms of something that's missing we'll just see if it makes sense in terms of scoping uh, to add it in the white paper and then we'll just add it and then discuss over how how deep we want to go there uh, and then right so that's the third part identifying sections where it the reference could make sense and then we'll create some updates uh, in the google docs and go through dis discussing it we'll try to see if we can get feedback from the creators of the threat metrics and see if they they want to comment when we are open it up for general feedback any questions or uh, thoughts about this
no uh, in not just Anthony, you anyone else can also ask questions okay cool so sounds like looks good and uh, seems fairly clear so that's the second issue now we have about 10 minutes i maybe want to pause before uh, and if there is nothing else we'll try another one uh, another one of the issues any questions or any thoughts in general about the white paper from what we discussed so far any questions on hey what do we do about this or that uh, any questions on the issue description like what are these meta deliverables which i want i hope to cover as well And again, if, if you're shy, I am also shy, but I try to be more open these days. One want to add a question on the chat. I think that's totally fine as well. I guess it will be like good if we can go over the meta delivery bills. Okay, all right, cool. Uh, we'll do that. We have a few minutes more, so we'll try to do, cover that. Anything else from anyone? going once okay i see a chat question need oh not a question okay all right cool thank you alok and okay going once going twice going thrice all right cool so let's cover the meta deliverables so the first so this is really a deliverable about a deliverable so that's why it's called meta deliverable where we are not really changing anything but just trying to decide something so that we can see if something really needs update or not so for folks uh, familiar or unfamiliar there is there is an audio version being worked out for version one and there have been some translations that have happened uh, in the past uh, for version one so what we need to decide based on the bandwidth of people and availability whether we want to keep this n minus one cadence or publish the audio version, the translations, all of it together for version two. So that's an open question and we all get to decide what we want to do as well as the folks who are working on translations and audio version. Uh, any thoughts from anyone on that? Yeah, I guess, like, what would that look like for this group? Is it mostly like a coordination with the translators and everything? Or is it like, like, what's the difference for, for us? Yes, for for us, it shouldn't change a lot. Uh, what would only I, I can I suspect would change is we'll have a lesser window uh, in terms of how much time we can spend to finish our contributions before uh, we lock the document and the audio version and translations begin. So if a tentative plan, for example, is to publish this in version two of uh, version two in May 2022 around KubeCon, if we end up deciding, hey, we need translations and audio version before that, the final round of reviews would need to happen at least, I would imagine, two weeks, if not three, four weeks earlier uh, than what we have planned in April. So that gives them enough time to work on the translations and audio version. So that's really what I feel would change. But in terms of direct contribution, I don't see anything changing. All right, I hope that helps. Next one is consider renaming the white paper to something else based on content. This was one uh thought uh shared by one of the shared in one of our usual mem community uh meetings that does the content of the white paper really match with the name white paper uh, and i wasn't sure what else would we call it but i just wanted to keep it out keep this out and get feedback from folks if folks have other thoughts it certainly is not a standard it could be a guideline but i'm not sure whether we should call it anything else than white paper
and we we don't have to decide now we still have time but if you come up with something post a message on our slack channel uh, tax security white paper and we'll discuss it the other discussion point was people were think saying that hey i don't understand markdown or github is not accessible to me uh, and i lose pdf uh, very easily so i need my own format that i really like uh, for that i can consume it from so some of this recommendations were epub html mobi uh, i'm not very familiar with epub and mobi uh, not sure if anyone else is uh, for html looks like that would be covered because uh, the one of the goals for the tag this year is to move all of our content that we have in github on a website that is accessible just like cncf.io would be accessible and uh, so the paper once it's in markdown would also be hosted there so that should take care of a web page showing the paper but for epub and mobi if folks have done that before or would be happy to um create maybe a guide on how to convert markdown to epub or uh, host individual formats in github like the ones mentioned here i'm happy to hear your feedback okay maybe let's do a quick uh, sort of survey uh, before, of, on this anyone consume anything with epub or mobi no oh okay i see chats chat messages i don't i don't okay cool so looks like it may maybe a full serent if we try to spend too much time on this so i'll keep that in mind but good to know uh, next one was uh, revisit distribution distribution strategy so that content reaches the intended audience so this is where i want to get some feedback from every one of you last time in the last time we published this via cncf blogs on twitter our own as well as cncf's twitter handles and all the other ways like linkedin and some other ways to publish it we aren't sure whether this really reached the end users and uh, maybe uh, and because the main audience for this is end users so for folks uh, in the call especially who are from end user companies basically the ones who consume cloud native technologies how did you find out about the paper was this did you find out about this when it was published or it took a while or you heard it from word of mouth i am very curious to know and if there is a better way where we could have shared it i am i am happy to uh, understand that as well yeah i found out about the previous white paper through linkedin but mm -hmm. i can consult with our vp of marketing on how is the best way to spread the rumor for the upcoming white paper got it okay savita is saying she heard it from tax security mailing list so okay that's good honestly uh, it was hard to find the, the, for me <laughs> For me, the 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 first version, uh, because I think it's, it's I think it's hidden somewhere in the CNCF uh, page. It's not easy to find in the, the in the global global page. Oh yeah. Oh, you mean like if it was part of CNCF.io website or something like that, it would have been yeah. easier to search. Yeah. Ah, I see. Okay, that's good feedback. yeah it it did uh, we did a good job but also not a good job in a way in terms of people who were familiar with security tag found it people who weren't or were in the surrounding uh, tags found it but anyone who consumes it but isn't really part of the community struggled to find it so seems like that matches with what you all are saying so we definitely have scope to improve there we will keep track of this and 
continue to discuss this more. Uh, last one before we wrap up uh, was something where we want to know who who is referencing version one so that we can add it in appendix just to get impact uh, of version one. Like if were there papers, blogs and other th places where were CNCF security white paper was uh, published and referenced and said, hey, we found this useful, etc. So this is a very hard thing to do uh, because we don't have something like Google Scholar for this. Uh, but it's something I would be interested in knowing more and getting some ideas and feedback from you all. Okay, all right. So a couple of chat messages. Anthony found out while contributing to tax security. I see this is part of controls catalog. Okay, so this was referenced in the controls catalog. That's how we found out about version one. Ah, interesting, John. So it sounds like if you're part of community, it's easier to find out, but otherwise it's hard. But okay, I'll pause for now. Uh, this instance is a 45 minutes meeting. We're already a couple of minutes over. Uh, uh, so hopefully this is useful for you all uh, and you know what to do next if you want to contribute. Uh, if we couldn't cover anything or you come up with questions later, uh, please go to this uh, channel, Tax Security White Paper on CNCF Slack. I'll be happy to hear from you and answer any questions that you may have. Uh, and if you're attending the 10 a.m. meeting, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific meeting, see you in a few minutes. All right. Thank you. Okay. So bye. Okay, bye, Thank, bye. You. Thank you. We'll meet you most much. likely in a couple of weeks from now. Just FYI. All right. Thanks, okay. Bye. bye.